Good morning and welcome to Coffee with Karma. And today I'm having a specially good brew. A mixture of vanilla, hazelnut, and dark chocolate coffees. Oh, so yummy. So yummy. Anyway, that's not why you're here. <laughs> you're here to learn about the five common book writing myths that entrepreneurs believe and to get them debunked. Bunk. Busted. Hi, I'm Karma Spence and I help entrepreneurs write a lead attracting book in 90 days or less. And that 90 day program is so close to being ready. I'm just getting some final details. I will be having a wait list available soon if that is of interest to you. But right now, you're interested in getting what these myths are and how can you bust through them. So let's get started. Myth number one I need to have a completely original idea. Well, I believe it was Shakespeare who said there's nothing new under the sun. Um, and then Sting sang a song about it. <laughs> Originality is less about finding something that no one's ever heard and more about having a perspective that nobody's ever heard. So it's not that they necessarily the idea be original, but it's your take on that idea that's original. Because there really is nothing new under the sun. It's it's very rare that you might have a completely 100% original idea. So don't let that hold you back. Because the people who want to buy your book and who will follow you and who, and who will hire you are those who are meant to hear that information from you and no one else. It's like someone was just telling me about something that one of their mentors said. And it's like you're at a salad bar and only you make the salad the way you make it. And these other people can only eat the salad that you can make. And if you don't make that salad, they go hungry. It's not that the other salads aren't any good, but these people, they'll only understand what, what they need to understand from you. That's you are the original, not the, necessarily the idea. Myth number two. I must be a natural writer to be a good, to write a good book. So I get this a lot. People will say, well, Karma, you're a natural writer. Oh, I'm not, I'm hopeless. And I have worked with both natural writers and people who are <laughs> not so natural. And the thing is, writing is a skill, not a talent. Yes, you can have a talent for the skill, but because it's a skill, anybody can learn it. It's the same thing. I, I, did, I had an entire chapter in Public Speaking Superpowers that talked about the, the difference between talent and skill. And from the research that I did, the, what the general scientific community sort of understands, a talent is an inboard, an inborn, <laughs> not an inboard, inborn predilection it's it's like you you have a natural flair for a certain body or category of skills and you can apply that it applies really well to certain skills and not so well to others so when it seems like someone has a talent for something it's because they had a, a natural ability to do this category of thing they applied it to this skill and we're able to excel at that skill much more quickly than someone who didn't have that natural ability for that category of things. So it doesn't matter if you're a natural writer or not, you can write a good book. I know lots of people who are not natural writers, who do not identify as writers, who've written very good books. Now, they may have done it with the help of a really good editor, and I recommend that even for natural writers. You may need, if you're not natural at it, you may need a coach. Heck, I'm a natural writer. And right now I'm working with a coach who's helping me take my writing to the next level. So I, even natural writers. In fact, that was another thing that I've noticed in the, in the studies is that, yeah, this violinist had a natural talent, but you know how they hone that talent? Years and hours and hours and hours and hours of practice. 
that's what it takes to get good at a skill, whether you have a natural predilection for it or not. You need to do the thing. So you're probably better at writing a book than you think you are. Myth number three, longer books are more valuable. There was a time when that might have been true. It is rapidly becoming not true. Not only, and it's becoming not true in a couple of ways. So first of all, there have been there have been tons of short books throughout history that are highly valuable because they focused on one thing and they did that one thing really, really well. So length really doesn't tell you about the value. But now there's another layer in today's world. Shorter books are more valuable to people, not because the content is necessarily more valuable to the people, but because the how long it takes them to read the darn book is valuable to them. People are busy. They don't have a lot of time and they want you to get to the point. So longer doesn't make things more valuable. Shorter doesn't necessarily either. It's a really, you need to say what you need to say in the amount of time you need to say it. And that takes a lot of forethinking. You need to think through what you're doing before you write the book so that you, when you write the book, it is succinct and clear and gets to the point. Myth number four. I need to write every day to be successful. Here's a cliche. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. <laughs> so no, you don't have to write every day. There are people where they have an everyday writing habit. There are others who have a five day a week habit. There are others who have a weekly habit. What's more important than daily is that you you have a habit <laughs> that you're doing this regularly, whether it is every day, every other day, every two days, every week, it doesn't matter. The cadence doesn't matter. The regularity does. And myth number five, the writing process is linear. Well, you can make it linear if you want to, and I often do, but I find that it's actually harder that way. It's easier to write what comes easiest first, then go back and fill in the hard stuff. But some people like to tackle the hard stuff first and then fill in with the right, the easy stuff. Either way works. The important thing is that you're you're making progress. So if you're trying to write the first chapter, the second chapter, the third chapter, and you get stuck in the third chapter. And if you just didn't write the third chapter, moved on to the fourth, fifth, and then came back to the third, if that would get you to move, make progress, then do that. And honestly, the thought processes that, be, that eventually become a book are rarely, rarely uh, new, linear. are rarely linear. So no, it doesn't. So there's your five myths busted today. I hope that I have busted them for you and that you will stop believing them. They are, you don't, re you really don't need to have an original idea. You don't need to be a natural writer. The length of your book doesn't make it more valuable. You don't need to write every day. You just need to write regularly. And writing process is not necessarily linear, although you can force it to be if you want. I recommend not forcing it. So there you go. This is the end of this episode of Coffee with Karma. This is Karma Spence saying ciao for now. <laughs>